Hi, in this video from Kota, Rajasthan, we describe the stages in life of an ophthalmologist and the problems they may face at various life stages. Now, an ophthalmologist first enters the profession, then establishes oneself, explores the profession further, achieves a specialization in his or her chosen field, and then becomes a master. But unfortunately, there are some other stages later on which we often don't think about. Some ophthalmologists may experience a burnout. We do have to do a retirement planning in due course of time and sometimes we reach a point where we do have to slow down so that we can maintain our work-life balance. So the current scenario in ophthalmology practice is that there is a really long training which is needed to become a skillful competent ophthalmic surgeon. It takes a long time for your practice to take off once you establish. Once the practice does establish and it becomes a busy practice, there are long hours of work and there is always a longing for greener pastures if you are in a government job because you think that it is better to do a private practice job and so there is a long list of things that you want to do someday in life but it keeps getting postponed. So during the working years of our life we may face a, a lot of problems because of the kind of profession that we are in. Just like for any other doctor, ophthalmologists also cannot really delegate their co-work to their staff like it happens in many other professions. And so the better you do, the more busy you become unlike the other professions that we have around us. For example, this is the photograph of a busy CEO's office who may actually at many times be working from outside his office despite having such a plush one. And the one down below is a busy ophthalmologist's office with a long list of patients waiting for him day after day and the same routine to follow. There are a lot of demands on ophthalmologists just like any other doctors. We are really expected to strive for excellence and give very high quality results to the patients because the demands of the patients are increasing day by day and the society has very high expectations from doctors. And above all this, there is a daily threat of complaints or litigation which unfortunately are becoming very common. And then there is this constant negative media attention which is sometimes justified but a lot of it does not do anything good even for those who want to practice ethical honest medicine. So there are a lot of lessons we need to learn to maintain our good practices and good lives. We need to learn beyond clinical medicine when we are treating our patients. We need to learn just beyond treating of patients when we are managing in a practice and we need to learn beyond practice management to manage our lives in a better way. So how do we change this current scenario? We need to learn business and practice management, communication and patient handling skills along with our clinical training and the sooner we learn them the better it will be for us. There are many choices that ophthalmologists have today but whatever we choose to do whether it is a government or a private sector job or our own practice, even though the grass always appears greener on the other side, we will do well to water our own grass. And we need to learn non-medical skills, this cannot be emphasized enough. According to a study that has been widely described at many places and which is attributed originally to Harvard University, in any job promotion or success, only 15% of it depends on the aptitude and a huge 85% depends on the attitude of the candidate. And this is where we need to develop ourselves better because our education system and our medical colleges only teach a proportion of this 15%. So the concept of continuing education after the attainment of degree is very important. For example, in a US survey, only 12% respondents felt that their residency training had helped them adequately to handle practice administration. So along with having traditional CMEs where we learn new clinical developments in the field of medicine, we also need to focus on a continuing professional development where we learn to become not just medical experts but better managers, better communicators, collaborators and overall a better professional. The marriages are something that we need to work on. The traits of doctors that make them a good doctor, for example perfectionism, compulsiveness and being a workaholic, these ensure that one becomes a good doctor but they also ensure that the person may become a problematic spouse. So we need to work on our marriages. In the generation before us and the one before that, succession planning was easy. Many senior doctors and ophthalmologists would just uh, make their children, sons and daughters into ophthalmologists and by the time they were ready for retirement, the children would come and take over. But now that is not so easy because not all children want to get into the same shoes as their parents. 
those that do want to get in also don't have it easy because the patients don't accept them very easily and the phenomenon of practice buyouts as in the west is only just starting in india and this too is only by corporate groups solo ophthalmologists in india unfortunately do not have the kind of financial muscle that is needed to buy out established practices so when we reach the dusk stage of our life some of us are prone to develop a burnout the personality traits that make us prone for this are that we are perfectionists often we want to do everything ourselves and the society actually expects doctors to be infallible and never commit any mistakes burnouts are commoner in caring professions like the medical one where there is chronic emotional overload because of del- dealing with so many patients every day also the patients being over demanding these days and practice management is often cited as a source of stress and dissatisfaction with life coupled with that the fact that doctors are often bad at delegation and therefore end up doing too many wor- too many works themselves so what can be done we need to face our problems not to avoid them and that means that we change the way we work and so again i would emphasize that learning non clinical skills early enough would ensure that we achieve faster success and there are lesser years of struggling in our lives and just like we advocate healthy lifestyle and physical fitness to our patients let us practice what we preach for ourselves multitasking is something that we really need to do it is the demand of the hour so we need to improve our communication skills enrich our marriages and relationships and also optimize our time and money management Of course it is easier said than done but we do need to make a beginning in that direction and of course don't carry your multitasking too far because that may actually increase your stress invest in good quality staff and learn to delegate whatever work you can delegate and look after your body mind and spirit on a regular and enjoyable basis and there are those general tips which we have all read which are true for everybody we have to learn at times to say no to remember the big picture we need to find time for family because to care effectively for our patients we first need to take care of ourselves so let us also remember physical activity not just computer games and plan your retirement because with the kind of inflation that we have these days we need to do serious financial planning for our retirement to be able to maintain a certain degree of lifestyle so to conclude with changing lifestyle aspirations of youngsters these days medical profession is one profession that is really prone to stress and burnout because of the work style that we have and because of the increasing demands that society has on us so let us modify our work style to ensure that we continue to love what we do and still do what we love and this needs that we also need to focus on the non clinical skills because it makes it easier to cope with the problems that we face and in the end i would like you like to leave you with a quote to think about that the trouble with the rat races even if you win you are still a rat thank you very much